bottles here tonight. Speaking of blood bones, your next performer is an important person. He's going to prove it to us right now. This guy puts the ache in trachea shape. Give it up for James Adomio! Hi, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to uh, the Secret Loft. <laughs> I love it up here. Jesus Christ. I didn't know I could just, can I just do my set like this? <laughs> Massaging the top of my head? I, you guys wouldn't mind. Uh, this is comfy. This is comfy. I like to bring people up here sometimes. I have this little space I live in right above my artist studio, and I like to bring people up for a little, you know, chit-chat symposium sometimes. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a guy who's like that. Hey, my name's Terry. That's a pretty generic, like, artist loft kind of name. <laughs> so that's my name. My name's Terry. I live here in the space. Uh, so I'm just just drop in and see what the show's like. <laughs> Um, yeah, this place is really rad. I love, though, that there's, like, this, I like, I was looking at this, like, this is a small room. This is a cozy room. So I like this. But then there's this thing where it's like, is this where they have the Muppets sometimes? <laughs> this is, or, like, the nativity scene. <laughs> I think, I think it looks like, uh, it looks like, um, there's, like, it lo this looks like a cove where, like, the animatronic prospector would be hanging out like if you're on a theme park ride. <laughs> As you're coming by, like, you hope you'll be like, like, turn back, folks, you're hitting the wrong way. <laughs> the track's out ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and then magically, like that guy, th that guy never gives you any constructive keys in you. <laughs> huh. I'm shy. <laughs> what if I was just, what if like, what if like a two year old kid was like, I'm a comedian, I'm shy. <laughs> Tell the joke. Tell the joke, James, that you said was, I don't want to tell it to them. <laughs> but the animatronic guy, the animatronic prospector guy will never give you any constructive advice. He's always like, Turn back, folks, the trash out of here. Is there a lever or a break you can tell me about? <laughs> It's a mighty steep drop in it. I know. I'm in a runaway mining cart. What do I do about this? And then it's too late, and you go like over the hole in the tracks, and then recreating some horrific mining disaster, <laughs> which always makes for a great ride. If uh, twelve-year-old mining kids lost their lives a hundred years ago, twelve-year-old park goers will enjoy it today. <laughs> But then you like you're on the other side of the ride. He's always there. Who's like he's always like hey, I don't know how you made it down here. And you're like how the fuck did you make it down here? <laughs> well, no one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> Folks don't like talking to us animatronics much at all. So I suppose I'll best tell you. I start my day out perched up in my warning cove. Turn back, folks. They never do. After which I take a very safe and secret back escalator and perch up on my Floating stump. I told you so. Yeah. I hear a busting in the trash, which means it's time for me to start the whole cycle of futility all over again. And a seven and a seven and a seven and a seven. That is the uh, animatronic prospector theme song, if you didn't know it. And a seven and a seven and a seven and a seven. Um, you guys seem like a gorgeous bucket of piglets. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me into uh, your home here. <laughs> I feel like we're doing a Cub Scout meeting. <laughs> it's nice. Does it feel like a bong or something? Is it, can we just do that? Like a, this is like a bong room. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't have time to look in the mirror. I hope this works. I, um, <laughs> so when I have this button, I, I think this is the most hilarious jacket I own. It's a girl's jacket. Uh, don't worry, it's not the only thing uh, female on me. <laughs> I can't back that up at all. <laughs> 
<laughs> but like when I wear it like this, like this time of year, when I button it up, it's like, is it Christmas time yet, mother? <laughs> It's like it's like the little it's like one of the little boys that like uh, Scrooge opens the window and is like, "You boy, yes, <laughs> find a goose." Oh, very well, sir. Oh, I've tripped on a snowdrift. <laughs> I don't know. All I'm saying is, th th I don't know. Something about this makes me feel like it's adorable, but then also I should get kicked in the pants. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. Thanks for being here. It's uh. Nice to be here in Richmond. I've never been here before. Uh, yeah, it's fun. I grew up in Atlanta, the other part, the other side of the South. <laughs> uh, it's nice to be here, though. Capital. <laughs> Are there still any official duties uh, as far as the capital of the Confederacy? <laughs> There's no administrative. <laughs> it would be great if there was like a shadow government. <laughs> You know, like there's like a queen, there's like a queen of France that's still like, well, if we ever come back to power, I, it's me. <laughs> we technically are the royal family. <laughs> Wonder if that would ever happen. <laughs> Shit! Oh, damn it! <laughs> boy, oh boy, I drew. A, oh my God, the right to drive down from D.C. to Richmond. I have some sympathy for McClellan. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been said before. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's nice to be here. I actually, I was in Atlanta um, not long ago. I like every time I get to go to Atlanta because uh, it's like, as soon as you get there in the airport, even if you're not going to Atlanta, it's that airport and uh, they are the whitest, the whitest people you will ever see in your life <laughs> waddling through the Atlanta airport. <laughs> Just white, so white that you have to pronounce the H in white. <laughs> With a hair color that is the white part of a peppermint. <laughs> and I'm wearing a red sweater on a of red states. Just well, goozle it, goozling around through the terminal. <laughs> That, like wearing like bow tie and a suspend. There's nothing like suspenders that can make like a medical, like a medical problem level of obesity look like. Oh no, I'm just the Santa Claus. <laughs> no, me, I'm a bluegrass jug blower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want you to tell me stories. <laughs> I feel like going like, what is it? What is it you do? guy in the terminal, oh, I'm an old fat racist doctor. <laughs> Just trying to get back to my pediatrician's practice in Roswell. <laughs> what about you, sir? I am an actively homophobic lawyer for the government of North Carolina. <laughs> they have about 12 of us on staff. Just making my connection to Charlotte. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm from there. I went around, uh, I went around looking for the place where I grew up. Like, the, I found, I was staying in the neighborhood, suburban Atlanta. Not fun, now that I'm a grown up with taste. <laughs> when, you're, when I was a kid, it was like, Transformers, and it's awesome! And it's like, oh right, I probably went to bed at nine o'clock every day. <laughs> there. But I went like I went like walking around because I, I don't really drive a lot. So uh, I went walking around suburban Atlanta. Not a good idea at any time because then uh, you know you get lost because all the street names are like Duck River Road, Pheasant Run Highway, Pheasant Duck Lane, Anglo Saxon Buck Hunting Avenue, and then you just get confused and lost, and then like. Find the Chattahoochee River, and of course, like, didn't do Boy Scouts. I wasn't in Georgia long enough to, to do a beat old track and cracker boy, so I, like, got lost again. But, uh, uh I, I found, I found, I finally found my neighborhood, and I was walking around, and, like, taking pictures of these houses, and I noticed, like, cars are slowing down. And then I'm like, why? Oh, they're, like, suspicious of me. And then I noticed, like, all the neighborhood watch signs everywhere, and it was kind of cold, so I had my long, like, black jacket on, and I was like, oh. I look like the guy in the Neighborhood Watch Sun. <laughs> I have like this dark jacket blowing in the wind and I'm taking pictures. <laughs> and I'm like, who, who makes, who thought at what point
point in our like red scare paranoia where, where we like watch out for guys who are obviously spies. <laughs> They could be in any part of the country that's not of any real military value at all. They might be in Marietta, Georgia. Hmm. And they even have a circular bomb hiding in their jacket. I did. I did. I had a circular bomb and some anarchist literature. 1890s anarchist. Uh... What else was in Atlanta? Oh, I went to. Well, you know, I don't know if my, um, I don't know if this is is known, but I'm a gentleman of a certain persuasion, you know. How should I say? A confirmed bachelor, I suppose. <laughs> How are you now? One of those cobblestone boys, a satin pillow jumper, if you will. <laughs> Someone from the foreign office, I'd say. A professional attaché. <laughs> I don't really want to put too fine a point on it, but uh, I went to The Hideaway, which is advertised as like, Atlanta's oldest gay bar, which means we don't take no for an answer. I went in there and just immediately, immediately this guy was like, come here, come here, come here, I'll suck your dick, motherfucker, and I was like, stunned? And then he's like, and, and then he's like, I, I, like I just stopped. I was just like, Ugh. and he was like, off your bottom, I'll eat your asshole. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> These are normal things that happen. But why you? What's the pitch here? <laughs> um, I love the, I love charming places. I like to walk into like an old time gay bar. It's frozen in time where they're just all Hollywood squares. <laughs> <laughs> It's me, Chevy! I'm the the most hilarious doctor in Atlanta! I'm kind of picky about gay bars that I go to. I don't like the extremes, you know? Like, I don't like a place that's like, four floors of pounding purple mist. (laughs) Club Adonis at Bar Heat. (laughs) I feel like nobody wants to hear my observations on anything. (laughs) Subtleties are lost. Five dollars, five dollars, five dollars, please. Eight dollars, thank you. Get out. I worked in those places. I worked in them, and they're tainted to me. Um, there's another, but there's like the other extreme, which is like the other extreme is like sawdust on the ground, like cruisy place, and uh, you know, a certain smell in the air. And uh, yeah, you know, I worked in a place like that too. That was fun. I remember, uh, you know, this. I guess I have this like cumulative impression of. Those cruisy kind of uh, CD places. I want to do this. This is like the two different kinds of guys who are gonna like hit on you, right? So this is uh, the first one. The first one wants. The first one wants to suck your dick. I mean, you're me or whatever. Okay, so this is like the first one. <laughs> your collective dick. Okay, so this, this is the first guy. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so this is the and this is the this is the guy who wants a fuck you. <laughs> uh, do you want to fuck or fight? Either one. <laughs> now, both. <laughs> fuck you and fight you. <laughs> Love you and then hate you. <laughs> um, so I always find, I always try to find little crazy places. Um, one of my favorite, cra- I love like little small town southern gay bars. I, there was one. I went to Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, not too long ago, and there was. Uh, I went in. I went into the old. Uh, oh yeah, it was the only gay bar in a two hundred mile radius. That's how they. <laughs> they were part of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People, people even come from Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> and I go in there and the bartender, it's like a Friday night, like 9, 30, 10 o'clock, like busy time. And like I walk in and the bartender's got like chevron hat on, like, like kind of like just 
looks like a burnt cigarette. <laughs> and I walk in, and he looks up, and he goes like, I'll buy your first beer, because you're sexy as fuck. <laughs> Shreveport, um, make a point to come back here once in a while. Uh, I was in Shreveport incidentally when uh, they had just, I think they put the first cigarette tax on, it was the first time they had cigarette taxes and uh, the local news was, they covered it like it was a hurricane that had no smokers. <laughs> they were just like, they were just like, and horrible news here for area smokers in Shreveport, we went to the streets. And they're just people like, I ain't gonna pay. I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna drive 30 minutes to Texas to get my cigarettes. I'm not paying it. And they didn't even have one person in the news story that was like, smoking is bad. <laughs> it was just like, well, this is just an outrage. What's next? They're gonna just pull our lungs out of our body? <laughs> Um, oh, when, yeah, that reminds me, when I was in Atlanta and I was walking around lost, I, I walked past a place called, a store called Smoke 911. <laughs> and I, I then, as I got lost her, I ran out of cigarettes, and then I, like, I was like, fuck, I ate, this is a smoking emergency. <laughs> I really wish that I could call Smoke 911. <laughs> They must get calls like that sometimes. Smoke 911, yeah, I, uh, mm, uh, this, uh, oh God, so we have to get something. I don't know if you have parliaments I could do with a swisher suite of some kind just to get me through. It's been a few days now. Oh, Lord. Mm, put me up in a deck chair and massage my thighs. I still can't tell if that voice is the voice of, like, one of my southern gay friends, or like one of the southern women in my family. <laughs> same, same voice. Mm -hmm, that asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's something about, there's something about like, uh, like the southern women in my family who have been wronged by a man who's always wrong. Don't get me wrong. Like the women are always right, but it's hilarious to hear like this, to hear this like rage mixed with like having been dragged through the court system. Like, mm hmm that son of a bitch sat in front of that grand jury and told them, oh, no low contender right. Mm -hmm. Cause, he, Cause he's an asshole. That's I love it. I love Latin mixed with swear words. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had, he had to file an amicus curate cause he didn't have a real friends. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, I mean, uh, it's good to be here. I, uh, it's football season, uh, as we all know. <laughs> Did anybody else play football? No, you don't have to. That seemed like I was asking for an obligatory. No, it's fine. <laughs> Listen, guys, you know, I'll come down here and we'll, like, <laughs> what if we just, like, chill out and everything? Oh, <laughs> uh, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like this is like, you know what, this is outside of the class, this is outside of the curriculum. If anybody wants to come over, I live in the campus house on campus. I'm a new, young, cool professor, just kind of like hanging out with the kids, you know? Uh-huh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. See what a cool professor I am? I do things like this. I do, I do fail people. I do fail people. I'm, a, I'm kind of a shitty grader, but look how cool I am. I always got seduced by those cool professors. Actually, this is more like it. Now I feel like I'm, nah, yeah. Nah, yeah, this is normal. Like, I'm, this is my stage. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, here we are. Fucking guys. You know what, they, they're always like, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> You heard me. <laughs> Not what me? <laughs> um, but yeah, oh yeah, I was gonna say it's football season, and uh, I um, I know sometimes I get all over the place. <laughs> um, I played football. Anybody else play football? Yeah, cool, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, closeted gay football kid like me. No, nobody. Uh, <laughs> all right. Is anybody here in the closet? <laughs> what if I, what if I, what if I was like, what if I was like openly like, hey, I'm a closeted American. And he came up to me and as a closeted man, he was like, I was like, I got an opinion about that, but I can't tell you. 
James, Domian, you're in the closet and you're open about it. Tell us about what you think. I wish I could. <laughs> Charlie Rose. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, you're not allowed, you know, I was fucking, I was junior high school, high school, I was not, you know, you're not allowed to uh, be out. So I wasn't. <laughs> At least not back then. This was uh, the United States of America. I don't yeah. know if you know that whole story. But uh, I, um, I played the sport for a long time. I was a center. I'm going to get back up because, uh, you know, oh, football injuries. <laughs> <laughs> and other kinds of pain. <laughs> um, I played center for most of that time. And that is, I think, the appropriate position for the gay kid on the football team. If you don't know the position, that's the one hiking the ball with the quarterback over and over again. And that was just, like, awesome. <laughs> Cause you're just like, you're just like this, like relent, like several times every hour, just like, oh yeah, I'm ready when you are. <laughs> yeah. He's got his hands right there on my ass. I can feel your fingers. <laughs> uh, and then it's like, uh, well, that's not my real voice. This is my gay kid voice. It's in my head. I don't even need a snap count. I can feel your body. <laughs> uh, I'm keeping all the boys away from you. <laughs> Did I? Okay, still kind of hanging in there. Um, these are lousy pants. So. Split my fly open on stage. Barris bombed. Ruined career, over. <laughs> Bomb stories. But, uh, so I played the sport, and I can't, and then I, you know, and then I went, I did a year at college where I wasn't very good except in the locker room with one of my friends. <laughs> Not on the field, though. But, uh, I was good at it for a long time, and so that's why it's, like, upsetting to me, like, when we watch, like, televised football, the commercials are ridiculously homophobic very often. They get away with this thing where they're, like, You've seen this commercial, like for beer, for beer or something, where there's like a, it's usually a beer commercial where like a guy comes up and he's like a little like that's how the casting directors describe it, and I know this because I've been in those auditions. <laughs> it's like okay, the guy coming up to the beer, he's a little bit too for Budweiser, so <laughs> and, and so this guy comes up and he's like and he's like, uh, hey, uh, can I get a beer? And uh, there's, like a, there's like a bartender girl who's got like uh, big boobs and um, for some reason hates gay people because she's not a real person. She's written by casting directors, <laughs> marketing people. So he's like, hey, uh, can I have a beer? And she's like, um, not if you're wearing that thing. And then the camera pulls out and he's got like a pink feather boa and like panties on. And he's like, oh, right. Uh, I'm a fag in a beer commercial. <laughs> And then they're like, Budweiser, no gays. <laughs> Might as well say that. <laughs> and I'm not wrong about this because then, then, inevitably, in the same commercial, the, the tough dude swaggers up to the bar after him uh, with, like, a unshaven face and he's like and he's like hey me and my buddies who all like fucking girls <laughs> we'd like some Budweiser's <laughs> yeah and she's like ah oh, that's different <laughs> uh, here we go and they're like Budweiser that's right if you like pussy you like Bud <laughs> anything else and you might be arching your back tonight <laughs> Sometimes I think that even if, uh, you know, it's just like, it's just like a ridiculous standard of masculinity, I think. Uh, Budweiser, a ridiculous stink-eating standard of masculinity at all times. <laughs> I think that um, even if Sam Elliott wandered into the wrong beer commercial, he might be denied service. <laughs> Come up to a bar all bow legged. <laughs> See, friend. <laughs> Wondered if I could find something for me to coat my mustache for. Uh, that sounds kind of gay. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll 
must stick to truck stop Coors. <laughs> I love that Sam Elliott, Sam Elliott is always endorsing some product that is ridiculously masculine. Beef. It's what's for dinner. Yeah, I knew about beef. I heard of it. Four trucks when you're in between beef and Coors. <laughs> but I thought it would be funny if Sam Elliott just did endorse something that was a little bit out of his wheelhouse. If he had a commercial where he was just like, next time you're gathered around your non-denominational holiday party. <laughs> Holding hands with your life partner. <laughs> Take some time to thank the ever-loving men, women, and transgendered who are up in the glorious state of Oregon, pulling hot soybeans out of an unforgiving earth, so that you can enjoy that slice of tofurkey, served up so rare, well, it may not be kicking, but you can bet it'll still be photosynthesizing. <laughs> Eco-friendly, too. Soy, it's what's for brunch. I'd go for that. While you're at it, go ahead and wash her down with a nice swig, swig of pure life kombucha energy drink. Every bottle's got the mother inside. So now you can rest easy. Knowing that you're kissing the ever-loving Gaia spirit in all of us. <laughs> I'd go for that. I wonder what would happen if Sam Elliott was just riding alone on a theme park car. <laughs> <laughs> just, thought, just thought I'd roll into town. Maybe see the sights. <laughs> And then he comes up against, he comes up on the, on the guy who's like, who's like, turn back, folks! Well, I got this one figured out. <laughs> you wanna join me? <laughs> oh, that sounds pretty gay. <laughs> I'm a robot. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. But then it just turns out that the whole time the animatronic prospector guy has just been a guy like living up there. <laughs> <laughs> and what? I came up and I stabbed the robot and tossed it away. And I, have, I have a straw patch to live inside of now. <laughs> I scavenged off a used churros that float up in the water park. <laughs> Zeroes, popcorn, and other flocks of magician. And seven, 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 seven. Oh, uh, I'm gonna do a couple of impressions for you guys. I mean, uh, I love every time I get to see Gary Busey on television <laughs> because he has a ridiculous acronym for everything that he wants to talk about. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this right now. I'm here, this, I'm here right now because I'm a firm believer in pussy. Purity under stressful secretive instances. <laughs> that is why I will look you all in the eye at the same time and explain to you people that the events of September 11th happened on September 12th. And I have a freedom of speech to talk about that. Sweetheart, I'm here because I believe in rape. Reaction against predatory enemies. <laughs> I have a freedom of speech to talk about this. It comes from where? Wrong. The Bill of Rights is an Illuminati document. <laughs> My freedom of speech comes from the Magna Carta, which is why I carry a physical copy with me at all times. <laughs> and the leather-bound notebook in the mo motorcycle sidecar that is parked outside. <laughs> This is information that I have because I was attacked by tree frogs and I understand a lot now in hindsight and that is because I can look you all in the eye and tell you that Obama stands for ordinary black appearance masking antichrist. <laughs> you want to know more about this, you can go to my website www.garybcisthetruth.org forward slash bc forward slash truth .htm. If you enter that incorrectly by one by one digit, you will be taken to a Viagra website. 
I love Busey. When he was on Celebrity Rehab, he was not uh, like he uh, wasn't supposed to be there. He was like, <laughs> he was like, I want to make something very clear. I'm not a contestant on this program. I, I, like the like opening credits are like, including contestant Gary Busey. He's like, I want to make something very clear. I'm not a contestant. I'm not a participant. What I'm, a, I'm an outside attaché observer. I'm, I'm a UN stat. I'm a UN status pe peacekeeper. I'm here as a, I'm a liaison with the Swiss Foreign Department. <laughs> I have a passport that is blank. <laughs> I am not physically here right now. <laughs> Who is number one? I am number six. <laughs> Jesus Christ, put Gary Busey in the prisoner. We want information. You want information? I'll give you information. <laughs> I have all the information. God, even over That's the other tactic. Other than just holding out, like, I'm not going to tell you what you want. Just be Gary Busey. I'll tell you everything you want. <laughs> Mouse. Mankind only using sources energy. <laughs> what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. <laughs> means making enough asinine <laughs> nonsenses stupidly. <laughs> you can just go that over and over in English. Escher. <laughs> Egalitarian society. <laughs> Chewing her. Ever loving uh, ramen. All right, so to peter it out. Sometimes we find a dead end. Sometimes we find in a little video game thing where I bump up against the wall. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, well, yeah. What other impressions I want to do for you? Oh, yeah. Um, wait, I have a look. I wrote those down. I spilled a little bit. Oh, I need tippy cups up here, mother. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so it's like it's like election season, and um, I love like I, none of the candidates appeal to me. Kind of was uh, left out in the cold by uh, Barack Obama. I don't know if anybody else was, but uh, Ron Paul's an interesting figure. Um, you agree with him sometimes, and then you hate him sometimes. <laughs> He's like, uh, he's like in the same category as Pat Buchanan. <laughs> Pat Buchanan is like a weird figure because he was like, he was like, uh, you know, he was like, uh, NAFTA is terrible for American jobs. And I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Congratulations. Thank you, Pat. And then he's like, there's too many Jews on the Supreme Court. Like, Whoa. What the fuck? How did you just, what did you just do there? We have to stop the war in Iraq. It's a useless waste of American lives. I'm with you. Yay, Pat Buchanan. We have to build a wall to keep the gays from coming over from Mexico. Okay, hold well, on. You are wrong. 55% of the time, you fucko. Uh, but I call him as I see him. Thanks a lot, old timer. I'm glad you're there on the rocking chair. Stay there. <laughs> But like Ron Paul's like that. He's like he'll be maddening, and then he'll say something right. But like my favorite thing about him is that he sounds like um, he sounds like you know just a little boy who wants to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, is anybody else out there want to go play baseball or some good old fashioned American baseball balls? <laughs> And everybody's kind of ignoring him, like, no, 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 I mean, no, 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 play with you. Well, I just, well, all I think is that we should just get an honest baseball game. And you're like, okay, all right, he's a cute little guy. But then what he's asking for, and then that tone, is the complete and utter overhaul of everything <laughs> as it is right now. He's like, he's like, well, I think all we need to do is take the pie out of the oven, put it on the windowsill, maybe play a couple of innings, and then come back and burn the Federal Reserve building. <laughs> I wonder how far I wonder how far Ron Paul could go. It's like, well, I think, you know, after my first term, you know, it's obvious that returning to the gold standard wasn't enough. I think it's important that we now return to a foraging society. <laughs> No homes, no houses. <laughs> we should live in trees. And come down when the scary animals are sleeping. <laughs> Grab what we can and then return to the trees. <laughs> Pretty nice experiment. <laughs> um, what was it going to say? Oh, yeah, I, uh, 
Who do you call? Who, yeah, I'm gonna do a, Oh, I, I'll do Danny DeVito. I love... <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Hoffa. Uh, I love... I, I loved the movie when I was a kid. Um, and I didn't realize that Danny DeVito directed it. I didn't know he directed movies. But then I saw he did, and then I was like obsessed with like I turned the volume down. I was just watching it and imagining that I was Danny DeVito, like with the actors, like the t- the script for the first time, like like we cut to, <laughs> we cut to exterior Detroit Wheelworks factory. The camera pans across this scene of labor strife, and we land in the face of a young Jimmy Hoffa, his eyes burning with labor struggles past and future. The camera pans lower, lower. No, not the camera, jackass. It's a table read. I need the script lower. I'm lower than table height. I'm Danny fucking DeVito. Okay, so that's a low blow. I'm sorry, but what else can connect? Um, okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna do a couple more. Oh, yeah, uh, okay, so I'm gonna do my impression. This is, uh, this is, um, Louis Black. <laughs> I guess I... Alright, pardon me, Coat. Uh, this is my impression of Louis Black reading from a 14-year-old girl's diary. <laughs> split, but you know what? Pretend, pretend that I didn't call attention to it on stage. <laughs> Do me that kindness. <laughs> okay, so this is Lewis Black reading from a 14-year-old girl's diary. Dear diary, today is the very, 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 carrot very, the best day of my life. That's because Sean winked at me and blew me a kiss. <laughs> week is the big dance, and I know we're gonna be in love forever and ever. Let's <laughs> say that again. Next week is the big dance, and I know we're gonna be in love forever and ever. Sean Milton, Becky Milton, Sean and Becky Milton, heart symbol, heart symbol, googly face shotgun. <laughs> I love whenever I can see Lewis Black. It's like, what are you so angry about and pointing at? I'm angry because I see demons and I'm trying to poke their eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, you know, I, I'm, I guess I want to talk about this. Um, I, uh... I'm fascinated with the uh, gay villain archetype. <laughs> Which is the way I kind of consciously, I mean, I, I, I wear like a thin mustache. <laughs> I didn't present it right tonight because I haven't shaved so well. <laughs> but I have, you know, this, the, the thin mustache and that look. I love that. Hmm, yes. That always tells you that there's a gay villain running around. Hmm, facial grooming. Something must be a foul. <laughs> Like any Vincent Price movie, he's there. He's like, they, they never like the, the gay villains never gonna tell you I am a homosexual and evil. It's always like suggested, like in, like in the Vincent Price manner of like, mm, yes, welcome to my library of secrets. This is Raoul, <laughs> my curious associate. Our relationship need not be specified. <laughs> One of you will be murdered tonight. <laughs> uh, but I love that it starts at a young age in cartoons for kids. We teach kids that there's an effeminate character, watch out, because he's a bad guy. If you remember the uh, Disney Afternoon, the main villain on the Gummy Bears was um, Duke Igthorn who wears a uh, tight, body-fitting, gray chainmail, mail, oh, boots, and the thin mustache, and he's always screaming and singing at the same time. That means there's a gay villain running around. He's like, bring me out, come in Bring them to me. I want them for the gummy berry children. I don't want to get them myself. I left the muscle town, not strength. <laughs> but I want them to 
<laughs> the gay villain never wants to do the work himself. <laughs> Bring it to me! I'm sitting on my... I'm draped across my throne! Um, and then, of course, uh, the Decepticons. All the Decepticons and Transformers. Megatron! Shut up, Starscream! <laughs> the character's name is literally Starscream. <laughs> Pretty obvious. Why aren't we deceiving the Autobots? Can it, you power bottom? <laughs> <laughs> if we realize that... If we realize that uh, homophobia was based on gay robots, it might fall apart overnight. <laughs> like a Transformer that you would have bought 15 years ago. But, uh, but uh, I love that uh, like Megatron sounds like a grand dame drag queen. It's like, give a shit to the young girl. like It's like putting a wig on backstage, like, watch and learn or you'll never work at Club Cybertron again. <laughs> Am I on? Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, robot in disguise. <laughs> There's endless examples of this. They, uh, it's not, it's just boys. I realized this recently, uh, like it's not just boy characters. In The Little Mermaid, the bad guy, the gay villain is a, is a, is a girl. It's Ursula, a sea witch. I'm a big, fat, brassy dyke. <laughs> I have a boy's haircut that's already gone gray. Ugly, right? <laughs> Boobies that kind of look like pure fat. And I've got a pussy that splattered on the seafloor. Ugly, ugly gay. <laughs> Those poor unfortunate souls. I'm like, hold on a second. Is there any evidence that you're the bad guy, Ursula? Yeah, I'm a big fat dyke with a boy's haircut and tentacles for a pussy. Ew. And I'm like, no, every time I've met a woman like that in my real life, she has been awesome. That's, that's, the, woman, that's the woman who's like, yeah, the bar is closed, but you know what? Tell you what, lock the doors. One round on me. <laughs> We're doing shots. I call them poor, unfortunate souls. Yeah. I got eight tentacles, one for each beer tap. <laughs> pussy, pussy, pussy. I, that Ursula in real life is the kind of woman who's like, I gotta go home, I gotta feed my cat. <laughs> what's wrong, what's wrong with her? They're, 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 that's a loving person. <laughs> you can tell by listening to the voice, like that's a fun, that's a person who leaves the voiceover studio going like, Oh, great, awesome, let's go have lunch! <laughs> but um, I guess my point is, gay people. <laughs> Man, butch up, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, gay people are not villains, necessarily. Uh, <laughs> I mean, sometimes, sure. <laughs> time to time, same ratio as everybody else, but uh, you know, you wouldn't know that if you've ever seen, like, a Robin Hood movie. The Sheriff of Nottingham. Oh, how do I look out there on the wall? Good? Good, all right. A little curved. A little nice. You know what? Yeah, I suggest... Hey, hi, anybody watching it downstairs? How am I doing downstairs? Great. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Fucking pick up the pace upstairs. <laughs> um... <laughs> The Sheriff of Nottingham in any Robin Hood movie is always just like a fabulous fop in furs. <laughs> he's like, he's like, bring me this Robin of Locksley <laughs> and make him kneel before me. <laughs> well, 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 well. Robin Hood. <laughs> You were so strong and masculine when you were shooting your arrows so straight. <laughs> but look at you now, here in chains, <laughs> in my dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> You're unable to move, quite immobile. Oh. <laughs> 
I feel you tense at my evil blowjob. <laughs> but let's see your reaction when I get to you from the Sherwood Forest. <laughs> Bring me the most painful condoms available. <laughs> What? I've merely turned my back and he's gone? Find him! Seize him! Bring him to me! I'll be waiting here. <laughs> I love, I always love the Sheriff of Nottingham. In the iconic, classic Robin Hood movie with Kevin Costner, the definitive version of Robin Hood, <laughs> Alan Rickman plays the Sheriff of Nottingham, and he has this awesome throwaway line. He's exiting, and he, as an afterthought, he goes, oh, yes, kill the children, and he leaves. <laughs> and like, Wait a second. That doesn't have anything to do with the gay agenda at all. <laughs> I was against childbirth from the start, but now that they're here, they might as well be killed, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I always hated the species. <laughs> uh, but my favorite inconsistency with it is like, they always want to have the Sheriff of Nottingham, any gay villain, but the Sheriff of Nottingham in particular, steal the girl, steal Maid Marian from Robin Hood. Like, that's part of what he wants. Like, I will force her to marry me. <laughs> what? <laughs> that isn't, that's not consistent with the way the character has been portrayed heretofore. <laughs> I will have a coronation slash forced wedding. Like every gay villain, Jafar and Brimming, <laughs> the Sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> Bring, no, that's not accurate. The Sheriff of Nottingham does not want to steal Maid Marian from Robin Hood. He wants to know what it's like to have a fucking wedding. So... <laughs> We let that happen and everybody's gonna be happy. Let the Sheriff of Nottingham go, you know, go to New York City or Canada with uh, Prince John. <laughs> everybody's gonna be happy. <laughs> I guess, you know, it's, it, it's a little bit silly to me because I vividly remember watching a wrestling. I mean, I was a big wrestling fan and, uh, I mean, come on. I, I mean, do you guys remember this? Now, granted, you know, I've participated in a lot of wrestling matches. <laughs> Ulterior motives. <laughs> Won some, lost some. Mm, victories are not exactly what, you know, sometimes it's a little opaque, which is a victory and loss. But, uh, uh, I remember, like, the, I remember over and over again, like, Ravishing Rick Rude, or something like that, like, Ravishing Rick Rude, Standing over a man he just conquered, right? <laughs> Looking a lot like Freddie Mercury. <laughs> like waving his genitals. He had the mustache. But he just had the mullet. He had like, like, and he was like, woo! Mm, yeah, this! And if you, did, like, if you weren't aware of like what was going on, Jesse Ventura was there at ringside to just fill in the blanks. He was like, look at that body, McMahon. <laughs> That's ravishing Rick Rude, and my God, is he ravishing. I want his body. Look at the way. You go watch you, no, YouTube video with Jesse and Kermit Ravishing. He's like, look at that perfect physique, McMahon. What are you talking about, Jesse? I'm talking about the specimen that I want to settle down with when I find my special war buddy. He's my Spartan friend, and I want him. He's ravishing. I want him on top of me right now. But then they would, like, swarm the ring with bikini girls to get ravishing Rick Root out of there so Jesse Ventura didn't pop one on national television. <laughs> oh, 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 what a body. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Hold me, Ted DiBiase. <laughs> I love what is what is Jesse Ventura like after he after he has sex or something. He's like that was a tender moment <laughs> between two consenting adults. <laughs> we know it can't last. <laughs> I've got to go back to Mexico. 
So it's time for me to put my pink feather boa back on <laughs> and my 9-11 truth shirt. <laughs> And I'm going to leave you here on this walrus mating rock. <laughs> I love that Jesse Ventura was like the only guy who could go on Fox News and like defeat them. He would go on, like he went on Sean Hannity and he's like, okay, do you really believe, do you see, okay, Governor Ventura, do you see, first of all, my golden pen? Do you see my golden pen? Are you hypnotized by my golden pen and Christian looks? Do you really think that waterboarding is torture? I've been waterboarded, Hannity, have you? <laughs> my wife waterboards me every morning for breakfast. <laughs> Orange juice, coffee, milk, tea, Cheerios. It's all part of a complete breakfast. But it is under duress and very painful, so yes, it's torture. <laughs> we went on Bill O'Reilly, and Bill O'Reilly is like, uh, okay, so you're a pretty far left guy. What's far left about asking questions? <laughs> Okay, but do you really believe that Bush knew the towers were going to come? Do you really believe that? I've brought towers down before, right? <laughs> I'm a Navy SEAL. I have personal experience with 9-11 style false flag events. He was totally invincible to everything. <laughs> you could not land a punch on Jesse Ventura. And you're like, hey, Jesse, uh, Jesse, come on. What, are you really telling me? I did. I wrote a book on it. <laughs> He was invincible, <laughs> except, as it turns out, if you give him his own television show. <laughs> because unfortunately, as much as I agree with him, and I think he's doing a bunch of wonderful things, in Mexico, I guess, <laughs> wherever he is, he will give an hour to any theory at all. <laughs> he won't just stick to like what's actionable in court. <laughs> like uh, the events of 9-11 or the Kennedy assassination or something, he's like, I found a weirdo on the side of a mountain who says that the moon landing was faked. I'm going to sit down with him at a dark place <laughs> without a name. And I'm going to talk to him for an hour and inevitably come to agree with him. <laughs> I'm gonna get to the bottom of what really happened. <laughs> but the worst thing about his show is the name of it. The name of his show on True TV. Who knows if it's coming back? They're not gonna let it on the air. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> the, the, the name of it was uh, Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura. That is the phrase that you use to dismiss a piece of information as being false. Oh, don't buy that. That's just a conspiracy theory. Yep, we're going with that. That's the name of the show. <laughs> Why? Well, the first option was questionable information with Jesse and my daughter. <laughs> But I wanted something that would hold water. <laughs> Uh, you could have tried anything else. Well, we workshopped wives' tales as overheard by Jesse the Lover. But my wife didn't buy it. I wanted to call it Barstool Hearsay. As told over shots by Ursula the Sea Witch. Damn, that would be a fun couple. Ha! You got it, mama. <laughs> Those poor unfortunate souls. Who are you to tell me what's unfortunate? <laughs> Come to think of it, Ursula does look like one of those gorgeous ladies of wrestling. <laughs> there was ever a crossover. They are like a bizarro He-Man and She-Ra. <laughs> like if they, do, if they just exploded like popcorn kernels. <laughs> oh. Sometimes I try to match people up with cartoon characters. Don't piff at me. <laughs> Mr. Piffle. Okay, I'm going to get out of here soon. I want to tell a couple more stories. Let me see. Uh, you know, oh yeah, okay, so I'm gonna tell you this, I, uh, I, um, 
I, I, I was living in Los Angeles for a long time. Uh, right before I left, I had this gay bashing experience. I wanted, there was um, these couple of queers. Were there <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I was on the wrong end of this. Uh, it was really, it was, it was enlightening though. It, I was, um, I was leaving one of my favorite bars, and I was with the gentleman. <laughs> The gentleman that we had met that evening and were exiting the bar for an evening's pleasure, liaison, if you will. <laughs> and we, uh, we took ourselves to the parking lot where we began to gentleman each other ever so <laughs> <laughs> And then across the parking lot, I hear this voice, uh, this, uh, this voice goes like, hey, faggots! And, um... I just assumed, I didn't have my glasses on, I just assumed that it was a friend of mine. <laughs> I had a lot of friends. So I went bounding over into the darkness like, hey, what's going on? And I get over there and this guy's like, get away from me, faggot! And I was like, oh right, danger word most of the time. <laughs> Idiot. So then words were had. We had an exchange of words on the open market at a fair value. And boy, oh boy, it was great. He kept calling me a faggot, which I suppose is a valid excuse. <laughs> excuse me, valid criticism. Boy, get that right. Valid excuse. That didn't make sense. He really had my number, I'll put it that way. Yeah, he landed that one right in my vulnerable spot. Faggot. Touche. Um, but then, so but then I was telling him that his chin didn't match his face and things like that. <laughs> Good for him to know. <laughs> and then we reached this weird impasse because he like he had like uh, people with him who were like kind of embarrassed and still backing him up where they were like, no, 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 like, no, no it's a good gay place, we shouldn't do this. And then like I was with this gentleman who didn't do anything, so I was like, alright, I guess this is we can skip to the end of this uh, relationship. I'll handle it myself. <laughs> and uh, I was like, uh, let's uh, shake hands and uh, be done with it. And he's like I don't shake hands with faggots. Like, that's his policy. <laughs> uh, which actually reminds me of what my dad used to say. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was like, he was like, I don't shake hands with faggots. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, your kids are going to be fucked up. And um, that's when he punched me and uh, drew blood. And was like, what'd you say about my kids? And I, like, my first thought, I swear, was like, I didn't know you had kids. That's a lucky guess. Because <laughs> I've always wondered, like, what's the appropriate response? And I think I stumbled upon it because, like, you know, if you're hanging out at 2 a.m. at a gay bar, looking to fuck with some faggots, then your kids are going to be fucked up. And if you are angry about it, a little short-tempered, your kids are probably already fucked up. And I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that I am wrong about that, and I hope they're great. I hope they turn out wonderful, but you're so fucked up that you'll think they're fucked up when they turn out great, so in your mind, they will be fucked up, so I'm still right. <laughs> uh, so there we are, and he's like attacking me, and like uh, I had to think quick, because uh, I couldn't win this fight. So I was like, do you want to be in the newspaper, sir? I said this, and it startled him, and I was like, if you're gonna do this to me, here, you will be in the newspaper. I kept saying this. <laughs> I got the power to command the press. And I, I mean, I rarely written, uh, I'm rarely written up in a purely positive light. <laughs> I barely get mentioned by the press, but I acted like I could command the fourth estate. <laughs> you will be in the newspaper, sir. And it like startled him and it scared him and his friends particularly, they were like, oh no, dude, this guy knows newspapers. <laughs> and they like hustled him into the car and they like drove away. And then I was like, thank God that fucking worked because who do I think I am? <laughs> it's not like Elton John was assaulted outside of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Front page news. Like, I do love imagining, though, that there was, like, some, uh, like, city desk editor at a newspaper who was like, I don't have a story! What?! A domian was popped in the mouth?! Stop the presses! <laughs> Sir, we don't have presses anymore, that's all. I want to to stop it! I want an early edition! We haven't won an early edition since 9-11. Run one! <laughs> If it bleeds, it leads, and my god, if the blood is rainbow-colored, it's a fucking headline. <laughs> Poof! Popped in the lip! Subhead! 
fisticuffs on the yellow brick road. I smell Pulitzer, pure Pulitzer. And then like the wire service of BBC picks it up and they're like, Dateline Silver Lake, California. Moments ago, an obscure gay personality was assaulted in a low level act of violence. But it did work. It worked. He left. He left. It, it, like, it worked. And I guess that just goes to show that uh, the pen is truly mightier than the sword. <laughs> to put it in the most gentlemanly way I can think of. Otherwise, I could say it this way that's a pretty fucking great Jedi mind trick. Mmm, do you want to be in the newspaper? Mm, I have the power to do that. So maybe, more than being villains, maybe gay people are more like Jedi. We could be good or bad. We just have some magical powers. Some very magical powers. Mmm, yeah, so luckily I'm uh, not a Sith. <laughs> I guess, I guess I'll, I'll leave you with this. I think, I, you know, I don't, I like, uh, gay people are vilified so much. And it's like, when, who, what, where was that gay banker that evicted you? Who's that, who's that gay guy that started that war? They don't, that's, that's all fiction. Those are all straight guys. Those are all straight white guys that you see at the Atlanta airport. <laughs> Those are the real bad guys. The real bad guys are people like Michael Bloomberg, who literally said, the NYPD is my private army. <laughs> like, whoa, what? Like, when is he gonna like? When is he gonna put on a space cape and have a Flash Gordon Emperor Ming <laughs> coronation? Here's the island and like a sound like a Queen soundtrack. <laughs> Here's the island of Manhattan completely walled off. Yes. Your Majesty. <laughs> Very well. Bring in the Occupy Wall Street protest survivors. And they bring them in in chains. Please, please have mercy. Mercy. Very well. <laughs> Grant them mercy. <laughs> now for a forced wedding. <laughs> I was at a lot. I was at Occupy Wall Street in New York a lot. I don't know if, anybody, if did I don't know if they did one in Richmond down here. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody, anybody go to that? Yeah. I was at. Uh, you know. I know. You know. Who knows where everybody's falling down on that? I, I think though. Uh, is anybody a big fan of the banks? I just want to pull the audience. <laughs> anybody big like Yay Bank of America? I'm, I'm on those guys' side. I don't think. I don't think that's the way the great national divide <laughs> falls down. I think it's more like. We hate the fucking banks on one side, and the other side, yeah, I hate the banks, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's the two sides of this abortion issue. <laughs> but I was, at, I, I was at the New York one, I, I, and I went to LA, I went to the Occupy LA, and also went to the Occupy Atlanta, and I thought the differences between them were hilarious. Uh, the New York one was amazing because it's like the, the main one, and like, the media was there in full force, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good at sound bites, <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I got interviewed by a lot of foreign press and that was fun. I, more fun than anything was heckling Fox News because Fox News, like, years ago I gave up watching television, like a healthy thing to do because you find yourself yelling at Sean Hannity, like, get fucking, take your gold pin down off the screen. <laughs> and, and, and then like, oh, this is all unhealthy, I should stop watching the entire medium. And then, uh... And then, but then, like, you see them there, per, in live, in person, like, you're like, oh, Fox News. You're like, hey, Fox News sucks. And then they're like, hey, shut up, we're trying to get a shot. And you're like, the TV can hear me now. <laughs> oh, boy, 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 oh, boy. <laughs> Fox News lies. Shut up, pal. Oh, oh, we're, we're trying to do something. I know, I know I'm trying to do something. <laughs> I got, I got people to chant, Geraldo is a robot, to Geraldo. <laughs> chased him out of the park. Because we were behind him on the camera, so the viewers at home couldn't tell if we were wrong or not. <laughs> we're like, we see gears and wires behind his mustache. <laughs> 
they don't want to interview someone like me. They want to interview like the guy who's like, got a rat crawling on his shoulder who's like, why are you here? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm here for health care for my rodents. <laughs> I don't know anything about anything besides my buddy. <laughs> Ow, and I need health care as well because of how much he bites me. <laughs> that's, the guy, that's the guy they put on the front page of the New York Post. Um, but that was like, it was, you know, it was, it was fun. It was really fun, and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be part of it. Then I went to the one in LA, and that was like, the most laid back one. <laughs> the, it was it was geographically huge, like appropriately for LA. It was just all spread out, you know, just like really chill, like legal pot, so everybody's just like smoking or whatever. There's guys there who are like, I've been camped out here at City Hall since the 70s, man. I've been occupying, I've been occupying for a while. I'm glad to see people finally come around. <laughs> I got a little tent. Dude's got a little tent. There's like all these Lebowski guys. <laughs> got a little tent here, man. Got a little real estate. Yeah, I got some room. My rat gets to run free. He's like, you know, he's got a little real estate for himself. You know what? If t traffic's terrible, if you're going to try to walk to the other side of the camp, I'd take the shortcut around the south lawn. <laughs> they should put like Occupy Freeways in there. <laughs> but uh, I, but I, went, I was at the Atlanta one, and that was hilarious because I'd never seen this, these groups of people cooperate before. Came, the, the, the Occupy, the, the hatred of the banks brought together two opposite sides of a long, long divide in Georgia politics. There were, there were, there were black civil rights people there who were like, this is a continuation of everything Dr. King started, and now we are fighting the real power of the banks. And then, like, right next to him would be, like, the guy who's like, well, I'm an old, fat, racist doctor from Athens, and I'm just trying to get back and walk over you. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's, they're working together. It's amazing. Um, but, like, that's, that, that was, like, really interesting to me because, like, the big criticism is, like, oh, yeah, there's so many different points of view, man. What, what, they don't really, I mean, there's a lot of different people involved there. Really stinky different people. <laughs> Million people who believe in different things. And I'm like, yeah, you mean like a ragtag group of rebels who have come together to fight an evil power? Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I get it. Yeah, they're fighting, uh, you know, the emperor. Emperor Bloomberg, or whoever. <laughs> Emperor Citibank. And you know what? If you're fighting somebody like that, and you're part of a ragtag group, uh, you know, some of you are going to be Jedis, some of you are going to be like Han Solo kind of assholes. <laughs> Han Solo's kind of like a Ron Paul guy, I guess. <laughs> and maybe you're going to be trapped in the Millennium Falcon with, uh, you know, Chewbacca there, and, you know, Chewbacca's going to be farting a lot. <laughs> Unpleasant. That's the way it works. So I would say, uh, Occupy if you can. Um, guys, thanks for listening. This has been really fun. I want to do, I'm going to do one more quick thing and then, and then get out. I want to do uh, one more quick impression. Oh, oh yeah. I'll leave you, I will leave you, um, I will leave you with uh, a closing statement at, in the style of uh, former President George W. Bush if he was leaving <laughs> you tonight. My fellow America. <laughs> First and fourth most, I'd like to close. <laughs> and to close, I'd like to finish. <laughs> there's a story we get. Uh, there's a story we get from Texas by way of the Bible. <laughs> and it's a courageous story about uh, <laughs> about about my my Savior Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a story that goes like this: There's a man. Uh, there's a man walking down the street on the beach. <laughs> and he's walking along next to Jesus. And, uh, and after a while, he turns around and he sees there's only one set of footprint. <laughs> so he says, Jesus? He says, yeah. <laughs> Where was you? <laughs> and Jesus whipped around and slapped him in the face. <laughs> and he says, well, that ain't fair. And Jesus says, so? <laughs> and he says, well, we was walking, but I only see a set of footprint, and I know that a foot can't walk in one set. <laughs> Jesus looked him right in the eye. And then he looked him 
right in the other eye. <laughs> and Jesus said, uh, and Jesus said, uh, it doesn't matter what Jesus said. <laughs> the point is, Jesus was flying. <laughs> And I'm going to be flying right there, right next to him. God bless the United States of America. God bless you all to death. I appreciate that. And if you haven't, please feed the, uh, the solid gold fishbowl and or the uh, skull. Thank you. Have a lovely holiday season. Good night.